Welcome back to part B of topic 8 lecture. This is where we will discuss learning objectives 7, 8, and 9. In learning objective 7, our aim is to conduct a segment or customer profitability assessment. So in customer profitability analysis, our question is this, does adding or dropping a customer add operating income to the firm? If our answer to that is yes, then we add a new customer or we don't drop an old customer. If our answer is no, then we drop the current customer or we just don't add the new customer. So in keep or drop decisions, relevant costs and revenues are those which change if the segment or the product or the customer changes. The decision therefore is based on profitability. It's not dependent on how much the revenue of a particular customer group or a business segment or even a product line generates for the company. The general rule is that we will discontinue a product, service, a business segment or a branch when its total contribution margin does not cover the avoidable fixed cost and that's the key. We have to remember that fixed costs are not always relevant. It's only the avoidable fixed costs that we need to consider. So it's important to analyze the nature of the fixed cost and its relation to the two alternatives. And that is to either keep or drop. We also need to identify and estimate direct fixed costs. These are usually avoidable. The common fixed costs such as the manufacturing facility that produces a number of products is normally unavoidable if only one product is dropped. So we will see these principles applied in this example. So in example four, we are looking at worldwide airways. They offer its passengers the opportunity to join its World Express Club. Club membership entitles a traveler to use the club facilities at the airport in Atlanta. Club privileges include a private lounge and restaurant, discounts on meals and beverages, and the use of a small health spa. We are provided with this income statement. So sales of 200,000, variable cost of 135,000. So they have contribution margin of 65,000. But when they deduct all the fixed costs, 75,000, it looks like this club is losing $10,000. However, the accountant provided the following analysis. It looks like not all the fixed costs will be avoided if they decide to drop this particular service or product line. The avoidable costs are shown in the differential column and the unavoidable costs, mostly the fixed costs, are shown in the second money column, eliminate. So it looks like from this analysis provided by the accountant, if we keep the club, we will be making a loss of $10,000. But if we eliminate it, we will still continue to incur fixed costs worth $50,000. So the differential would be $40,000. So a much better way of showing the income statement would be using the differential costs and revenues. As we can see here, worldwide airlines would lose the contribution margin of 65,000 if they decide to eliminate the club. However, only 25,000 in fixed expenses will be eliminated. And so in the differential column here, we find that we are actually better off to keep the club by $40,000. So the conclusion from this part of the analysis 
would suggest that the club should not be eliminated. If the club is closed, the airline will lose more in contribution margin, which is 65000 than what it saves in the avoidable fixed expenses of $25,000. Now, it is also worth considering the complementary impact of the club continuously operating. So the accountant estimates that if the club were discontinued, the airline would lose $60,000 in contribution margin from those customers that are attracted by the club. So if we add this contribution margin foregone if club is eliminated to the differential profit made by the club, 40,000 plus the 60,000 foregone contribution margin, we will see that the monthly profit of keeping the club open is in fact $100,000. So worldwide airlines would be better off by 100,000 per month by keeping its club open. The conclusion therefore is to keep the club open. All right, let's look at this example for segment assessment. Here we have a company called Builders Inc. and we're provided with the income statement with separate columns for two branches, Cranburn and Halam. From this income statement, we can see that Cranburn is doing well, $70,000 in operating profit, whilst Halam has $25,000 and it is a loss. Now, we are asked to assume that all expenses are avoidable except for the allocated corporate overhead. It says that only 20000 that is 10000 for each branch, of the allocated corporate overhead will not be incurred, meaning it's avoidable, all right, if any of the branches are closed. So of these 50000 plus 40000 90000 in total, only 20,000 is avoidable and it is 10,000 for Cranbourne, 10,000 for Halam. So therefore, the remaining 90,000 minus 20,000, the remaining 70,000 will be not avoidable. So a revised income statement showing this is provided here. We now have Cranbourne, it's still the same sales for Cranbourne and Halam and all the costs are the same except for the corporate overhead. We are only showing the avoidable fixed costs of 10,000 for each branch. And as a result, we can now see that the segment operating profit for Cranbourne is 110,000 and for Halam is actually a positive $5,000 instead of a loss of $25,000. So what happened to the unallocated corporate overhead? The $70,000 is the common fixed cost and it doesn't matter whether Cranburn or Halam was dropped. So it's better to actually show it in the total column and not allocate it arbitrarily to the two branches. And so here we will still see a net profit of $45,000. This presentation highlights the fact that even though Halam is not as profitable as Cranbon, Halam is still contributing something to the overall profitability of the company and therefore should not be dropped. So by the way, what will happen if Halam branch is closed? Well, we can see it from here. We will just have the Cranbourne, but we will still be incurring the 70,000 corporate overhead. So in this scenario, instead of making a profit of 45,000, the company will actually be making a lower profit, only 40,000. Why is that? Because that 5,000 profit contributed by Halam will now be gone if we decide to drop Halam branch. So in this case, closing the seemingly unprofitable shop reduces overall profit. It's seemingly because in reality, 
halam is not that unprofitable. All right. So in this case, we need to examine the impact of fixed costs allocated to segments. And the question is, can these fixed costs be avoided if the segment is removed? If our answer is no, they can't be avoided, so they are not avoidable, then that means we have to exclude that from our analysis. Only the avoidable fixed cost will have to be taken into account in analyzing whether the customer, the segment, or a product or service need to be kept or dropped. Okay, so that is learning objective seven. Let's move on to learning objective eight. Here we will analyze joint product decisions, that is whether to sell at split off point or to process further. So what is joint production? This is the production process resulting in two or more products being produced at a certain point in time and that is what we call the split off point. The point in which the production process where the joint products are identifiable as separate products is called the split off point. So if for example you're a butcher and you specialize in chickens, you can't just choose to have chicken wings, chicken thighs, chicken breast, for example. All these will have to go through the same process. So from buying the chicken, slaughtering it, and then cutting it to different parts. Only at that point when you have already cut it, that's your split of point, then you will have the different products, chicken wings, chicken breast, chicken thigh, chicken drumstick, and so forth and so on. So in a joint production process, you can pick and choose which products you want to produce because all these different products are joined at a certain point until it reaches split off point. So our decision here is not so much which product do we want to produce, not the product mix decision, but whether to sell the product at the split off point or should we further process the product. So for example, we can further process chicken wings or we can sell it at split off point. So chicken wings could be crammed or it could be marinated. So we're further processing it. All right. So it's either we sell it at split off point or we marinate it and sell it marinated chicken wings or marinated chicken thighs at a higher price because it has undergone further processing. So the general rule is this. We will decide whether to sell at split of point or to further process depending on which one will have the highest incremental contribution margin. So let us have a look at this example. We have here Chocoholic company that processes cocoa beans. The first phase of production results in the production of cocoa butter and cocoa powder. The cocoa powder can be sold to other companies or it can be processed further into instant cocoa mix. So the cost and revenues are provided. The question is should Chocoholic sell the powder or process it further to cocoa mix. So this is the diagram of the joint production. So cocoa beans costing $500 per ton will be put into joint production and there will be process costing of $600 per ton as shown here. All right. So the total joint cost is $1,100 per ton. The cocoa beans of $500 plus the processing cost of $600. Now at split of point, two products emerge which can be sold for $750 per pound for cocoa butter and $500 per pound for cocoa powder. The point that we are deciding is this, should we sell cocoa powder at split of point or should we further process it to 
instant cocoa mix will need to spend as shown here another eight hundred dollars per pound if we decide to further process cocoa powder to cocoa mix but the instant cocoa mix has a higher sales value it is sold for two thousand instead of five hundred dollars so let us have a look at the analysis we have two columns here the sell at split of point or process to cocoa mix what would be our sales revenue if we sell at split of point we will be able to sell cocoa butter for 750 and cocoa powder for 500 joint cost is 1100 and so our profit if we sell at split of point is 150 dollars but if we further process it to cocoa mix we will still have the cocoa butter for 750 sales we won't have the cocoa powder because we are further processing it to cocoa mix but cocoa mix can be sold for two thousand dollars the joint cost is still one thousand one hundred but there is an additional further processing cost of eight hundred dollars so we will be making a profit of eight hundred fifty dollars if we further process cocoa powder to cocoa mix so obviously the further processing alternative is more attractive we will be better off by how much seven hundred dollars although that analysis is accurate there is a more efficient method and we call this the incremental method so here we are only using the incremental or relevant information as you can see those information that doesn't differ among alternatives like the cocoa butter it's the same regardless of whether we sell at split of point or process further therefore that is irrelevant we will ignore that what about the sales for cocoa powder and cocoa mix well that is relevant because it differs among alternatives right so the sales value of instant cocoa mix is 2000 minus the sales value of cocoa powder of 500 because if we decide to further process we will forego the sales revenue for cocoa powder so we'll need to deduct that from the sales value of the cocoa mix so our incremental revenue is 1500 go back to this analysis joint cost is that relevant or irrelevant well it is again the same regardless of which alternative we choose and so therefore we can ignore that it's irrelevant so let's go to the next cost processing mix cost is it different among alternatives yes if we decide to sell at split of point we won't incur 800 but if we decide to process further we will incur the 800 and so we will include that in the incremental method of analysis so we'll deduct separable processing cost of 800 so we get 700 dollars and that is the net benefit of further processing that is the answer we got to earlier when we deduct 150 from 850 our incremental profit will be 700 dollars we will be better off by 700 dollars so it's better and more efficient to use the incremental method in this sort of scenario and the verdict is that cocoa powder should be further processed into instant cocoa mix let us now move to the final learning objective for topic eight and that is where we will conduct an analysis of whether to retain or replace an asset we will also explain here why the book value is irrelevant to the decision here we will look at the example of galactic empire company they want to replace an old machine with a new more efficient machinery and were provided with the information about the new machine and the old machine they also told us that the sales every year is 200,000 and fixed costs other than depreciation are 70,000 per year so the question is should the manager purchase the new machine this is what the manager did 
He said, well, okay, let's have a look at the old machine. The original cost was 72,000, remaining book value is still 60,000. And if we dispose it now, we will only get $15,000. So we are going to make a loss from the disposal of $45,000. And so the manager said, no. Nah. So the decision was, we're not replacing the machine. The problem with that analysis is that it is incorrect. The relevant costs for the decision whether to retain or to replace an asset are these. You look at the old assets salvage value, the trade-in value. In this case, it's the disposal value of 15,000. So that one is a relevant cost. What about the new asset cost? Well, the new machine that we'll use to replace has a list price of 90,000. That is relevant too. What about the replacement cost or savings? That would be relevant as well. But the one thing that is certainly not relevant is the book value of the current asset. Why is that? The original cost was 72000 and that cost is historical. Do you remember that? So historical cost, costs that are incurred in the past and will not differ among alternatives are sunk costs and therefore they are irrelevant regardless of whether we decide to retain the asset or to replace it. So the analysis is wrong and so the decision made was most certainly incorrect. Let us look at the correct analysis. We need to compare the cost and revenues for the next five years because we are told that the expected life of the new asset is five years and the old machine is also five years. So let us look at the correct analysis. We need to compare the cost and revenues for the next five years. If we keep the old machine, what would be our sales revenue? So we're looking at $200,000 in sales per year for five years, that's one million. What about the variable cost? If we keep the old machine, our per annum cost is 1,000 times five years, so that's 500,000. Fixed cost is 70,000 per year times five years, so that's 350,000. And the remaining book value of the old machine was 60,000, we have been told as well. What about in the column for purchasing the new machine? The sales would be the same. The variable cost, however, will be less. Instead of 100,000 per year, it's 80,000 per year for five years, so that's 400,000. Fixed cost will still be the same, but the depreciation of the new machine will be different. We are putting in here the total cost that will be depreciated over the five-year period, and that's $90,000. What about the depreciation of the old? Well, it's actually going to be the same, and so with the disposal of the old machine that needs to be taken into account. If we purchase the new machine, we will be selling the old machine and therefore we'll get the 15,000 disposal value. All right, so what we can see from here in this column now, in the column called difference, we are just looking here at the relevant information. So the difference in variable cost between keeping the old machine and replacing it with the new is 100,000. Other fixed cost will still be the same. Depreciation of the new machine will be different because there's none in the keeping the old alternative, but there will be in the new machine alternative. Depreciation of the old is irrelevant because it doesn't differ among alternatives. So as you can see, the remaining book value of the old machine is considered a sunk cost and therefore it is not considered in this difference column. The 15,000 disposal of old machine is again a differential cost because it differs among alternatives and so we will include it in this column. So 
we will be better off by $25,000 by purchasing the new machine. And so therefore, it's better not to keep the old machine. A more efficient method is utilizing the relevant cost analysis. So we will be considering just the savings in variable cost provided by the new machine. In the old machine, our variable cost was 100,000 per annum. In the new machine, it's 80,000 per annum. So the difference is 20,000. Multiply it by five years, so you'll get 100,000 savings in variable costs. The cost of the new machine, as what we've said, is relevant because it differs among alternative. And so with the disposal value of the old machine, 15,000 is relevant, again, because they are differential. So the net effect is 25,000. So in practice, all the redundant information should not be included in the analysis due to the cost of data gathering processes. And so it's better to just use the relevant costs in your analysis. Now, there are also behavioral implications that we need to take into account. Despite the quantitative nature of some aspects of decision making, not all managers will choose the best alternative for the firm. Managers could engage in self-serving behavior, such as delaying the needed equipment maintenance in order to meet their personal profitability targets or quotas in order for them to achieve their bonus consideration. And so these behavioral implications need to be taken into account to ensure that our like the bonus system will encourage managers to act in the best interest of the company so if the managers are acting in the best interest of the company and in their own best interest that's what we refer to as goal congruence because managers goals are congruent with the company's goals um, if the managers are serving their own interest at the expense of the company's interest then there is what we call goal incongruence all right we will have a look at this illustrative exercise for equipment upgrade versus replacement so here we have tech guide that produces and sells 7,500 modular computer desks per year at a selling price of $750. Its current production equipment purchased for $1.8 million with a five-year useful life is only two years old. It has a terminal disposal value of zero and is depreciated on a straight line basis. So the equipment has a current disposal price of $450,000 However, the emergence of a new molding technology has led Tech Guide to consider either upgrading or replacing the production equipment. So we're provided with the following table for the two alternatives, upgrade or replace. It says also that all equipment costs will continue to be depreciated on a straight line basis and we are asked to ignore taxes. So the first requirement is should tech guide upgrade its production line or replace it so let us have a look at the calculations so we have the alternative to upgrade or to replace the cash operating costs need to be taken into account first so for variable manufacturing cost per desk for upgrade we are given $150 and for replace it's $75. So we'll need to multiply that by the number of desks that are produced per year, 7,500 for three years because we are analyzing for the remaining useful life of the equipment three years. So it's 150 times 7,500 units times three years for upgrade. 3,375,000 and for replace option it's $75 per desk times 7,500 desks times three years so that's 1,685,500. The current disposal price would be a relevant cost under the replace option because 
it's only when we decide to replace that we can dispose the old equipment and that is given at four hundred fifty thousand dollars all right what else needs to be considered the one-time capital costs this is the cost for the new machine or the upgrade so we are told here that the one-time equipment cost to upgrade the current equipment is three million and to replace it will cost us 4.8 million so those are the relevant costs let us now get the differential costs so the difference between cash operating cost upgrade versus replace is 1.6875 million the current disposal price would be 450000 and the one-time capital cost, the difference is $1.8 million. All right. So we have a difference of 337500 in favor of what? Well, it looks like Tech Guide will be better off by 337500 over the three years if it decides to replace the current equipment because replacing the equipment will have a lower cost 337,500 lower than the upgrade option all right it's important to note that the book value of the current machine the 1.8 million times three-fifth which is 1,080,000 would either be written off as depreciation over the three years under the upgrade option or all at once in the current year under the replace option so its net effect would be the same in both alternatives that is to increase the cost by one million eighty thousand over the three years hence it is irrelevant for our analysis notice that the current equipment has a useful life of five years and its purchase price was 1.8 million right so how much are we depreciating it per year it is three hundred sixty thousand dollars so we've already used it for two years so that's seven hundred twenty thousand dollars in depreciation but what's the book value one million eight hundred thousand minus seven hundred twenty thousand we still have a remaining book value of one million eighty thousand dollars so what are we going to do with that one million eighty thousand dollars well either we depreciate it over the remaining three years if we decide to upgrade the machinery or we have to write it all off one million eighty thousand dollars will be written off if we decide to replace the machinery either way whether to upgrade or replace we will still have to incur or write off the one million eighty thousand dollars and therefore it's irrelevant for our decision all right so let's go to requirement number two assume that all data are as given dan doria is tech guides manager and his bonus is based on operating income because he is likely to relocate after about a year his current bonus is his primary concern so which alternative would doria choose and we are asked to explain so this is a good example of the behavioral implication so we know from requirement one that it is better to replace the old machinery will be better off by how much we will be better off by three hundred thirty seven thousand five hundred so now with that in mind let us answer requirement number two so we are going to calculate the operating income for the first year under the upgrade and the replace option why is because dan doria the tech guide manager is only looking at one year because after one year he will be gone all right so his bonus is his primary concern after we either upgrade or replace what would be our revenue in one year so we have seven thousand five hundred units and how much do we sell it it's seven hundred fifty dollars selling price per unit so that would give us five million six hundred twenty five thousand and regardless of whether we upgrade or replace the machine 
it will still be the same. What about the operating costs? We've got the cash operating cost. We've already calculated $150 is for upgrade. Multiply it by 7,500 deaths, so that's 1,125,000. And for replace option, it's $75 per unit. Multiply it by 7,500, so that's 562,500. Then we'll look at depreciation. So the depreciation would be in the upgrade option, we will have the $3 million one-time equipment upgrade cost plus the remaining book value of the old equipment, which is $1,080,000. We calculated this earlier. Divide it by three because it has remaining useful life of three years. So that would give you $1,360,000. For the replace option, our one-time equipment cost is for million eight hundred thousand divided by three years so that would be 1.6 million now if doria decides to upgrade he will not record the loss on disposal of equipment so that would be zero there but if he decides to replace he will have to consider the loss on disposal of the old equipment so if the old equipment has $1,080,000 net book value and it can only be sold for how much? It says here the current disposal price is $450,000. So $1,080,000 minus $450,000, there will be a loss on disposal of $630,000 and that would be recorded as part of the expenses. All right, so the total cost under the upgrade option is two million four hundred eighty five thousand whereas under the replace option is two million seven hundred ninety two thousand five hundred and therefore the operating income for the first year under the upgrade option is three million one hundred forty thousand dollars and it's higher than the replace profit of only two million eight hundred thirty two thousand five hundred so if you are Dan Doria what would you do well your bonus is based on your operating income and so if you were Dan Doria you're more likely to choose the upgrade option why you will be getting a higher income of 307,500 so if your bonus is based on the income you will be receiving more. But from the point of view of the company, is it better to upgrade or to replace? Well, we have already calculated in requirement one that it was better for Tech Guide to replace the machinery. But Doria is the manager and he's the one making the decision. And his primary concern is his bonus. And so he will choose to upgrade rather than to replace. And the problem is after one year, whoever replaces Dan Doria will be the one who will have to deal with the wrong decision that was made by Doria. So this is a classic example of the behavioral implication and the goal incongruence in this case. Doria's goal is to maximize his bonus and in doing so, his decision is not in the best interest of the company. His decision will serve his own interest whilst the company's best interest is not given the priority. All right. Well, that's it for topic eight. I know that there has been quite a lot covered in this topic. This is actually six in one topic. So we've got the special order, make or buy, product mix, customer profitability assessment, sell or process further and retain or replace the assets. So six topics in one. But I'd like to encourage you whenever you feel a little bit overwhelmed to get back to basics. Matthew 22, 37 to 39. This is Jesus saying, back to basics, the most important thing, prioritizing 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. The world wants your best but God wants your all. So it's important that we put our priorities straight. So the world only want you at your best but God wants everything of you. Your weaknesses, your strengths, everything. Why does God want your all? It's because he wants to bless you, all of you, not just your weakness or your talents and your strengths, but all of you. So I pray that despite all these things that we are learning, we are still making God as our priority. Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, help us, O oh Lord, to make that decision to put you as the priority of our lives, to love you with all our heart, mind, body, and soul, and also to love others the same way as you love us. Father, we have covered quite a lot in this penultimate topic and we only have one more topic to go, but we pray, Father, that we will not be overwhelmed because we know that if we focus on you, everything else will fall into the right place. We ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, that's it for topic eight. I will be seeing you shortly in our class. Bye for now.